Hey everybody, Drew here. I am here again with my good friend Rex. Um, Rex, thank you again for you know hopping on and um, sharing your knowledge for this video. Yeah, thank you for having me. I love this collab. Let's just put out some good information and some good value bombs. Yeah, man. So yeah, today is um, this video is going to be a great one. You guys are going to be talking about deposits. Um, this is something I get asked all the time, and it is very, very important. This can make or break your business. And um, Rex has a really, really good, he has a bunch of good points on this. So um, Rex, if you don't mind, um, when we first talked, you mentioned that you don't call or you don't, can you just explain the difference between calling a deposit a deposit versus calling it a retainer and why that is important? Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to get into that. But before we get into that, I just want to put out a disclaimer. Number one, I'm not a lawyer. I have a background in business. This uh, this video is primarily for discussion and entertainment purposes. If you really have a issue that you need to discuss, we definitely recommend you uh, seek a lawyer in your jurisdiction. So whatever state or country or county that you're in, that's what these rules are going to fall under. So now, so now back to your original question, deposit or retainer. And here's the absolute letdown. It really doesn't matter because it really depends on where you operate, um, the county, the state, the jurisdiction, the situation, and um, overall. So, so really, you know, it's an inter what I wanted to say was, it's an internet myth. People say, I keep hearing people type and say, or in forums that if you put retainer, that you don't have to give it back. And I don't believe that to be true. I've never heard any lawyer say that. And this is why you can't believe everything you read on the internet. So, so there is one term though, that I, I will say at the beginning of this video uh, that will make a difference. And that is liquidated damages. And we'll get into that in the later part of this video. So to answer your question directly, frankly, um, whether you put retainer or, deposit it doesn't it doesn't protect you from having to give the money back i'm going to go into each term specifically the history of the terms and and what they kind of mean and where they came from so um let's look at deposit and retainer which one let's do let's do deposit first both of those terms are terms of art they come from a different industry so the word deposit is usually used in um the real estate industry in uh, tenant tenant and landlord management. So when you go and lease a property, you have to leave a deposit so that you don't ruin the carpet. You don't destroy the place. And the word deposit really means that it is a hold, but once you vacate the property, you're going to have to give it back. So in essence, deposit is really not a, a great term to use in the photo booth industry. Uh, what One place where I could see that is in, in your business, Drew, you do a lot of drop-offs and a lot of people would ask, well, what if they don't return the iPad? What if they don't return the kiosk that you rented them? So you would take a deposit. So once they did the rental, right, the rental price is one price. The deposit means that you're going to give it back. When they return the iPad to you or the kiosk to you, then you're going to return the deposit. So in essence, deposit is really, you know, not the best word to, to use in your contracts. doesn't protect you from anything. Okay, so that's deposit. Now we're going to move on and we're going to go to retainer. Retainer is also a term of art, and it's used primarily in law with lawyers. You retain a lawyer. You have a court case. You want them to review your case. You catch a case. Once they may not show up to court, but in order to show up to court, they have to review your docs. And so you retain them. They don't know if it's going to be one hour, 10 hours, or maybe it's a 10-week case, and you want to make sure that every time you have court on Mondays, that you have representation, so you retain a lawyer. So retainer usually, 
um, refers to retaining a lawyer in law, but in in photo booth, someone could retain your services, but if they don't perform, you have to give it back. Just like uh, if a court case with a lawyer goes 10 weeks, but uh, you're settled after the third meeting, then in essence, the lawyer has to refund you for the other seven weeks. So, you know, retainer deposit really doesn't matter. Hmm. Make sense? Yeah, completely. So <clears throat> now that we got that out of the way, what do you, you um, this is going to be a hard answer, a hard question to answer, but um, I get asked this a lot. And it's how much should I collect uh, from my customers from deposits? Um, people, you know, does that depend on how much you're charging or, is there like a freaking answer that I can just give everyone? What do you think? I, I, yeah, that's a great, great question. And, and the answer is simple. You know, it, it really depends. So if you're an event planner where you in the service industry will stay here is you may need to to purchase customized, you know, table settings that have their names inscribed in them. You want to take a retainer or a deposit for that because no one else can use them. They have someone else's name and you want to be able to at least cover half because the other half would be profit, maybe even more. But regardless, there's time and there's material involved. And I think in, let's just, you know, talk about in the photo booth world. Um, if you, for example, pay a graphic designer or if you reserve your uh, operators but yet you cancel on them, they're never gonna wanna work for you again. Our, our yeah. policy is if we reserve you, we're gonna pay you no matter what. If the cancel, if the, if the client cancels, that's why we don't give, give back. So anywhere from, from 10%, 50%, even 100%. So we like to do, uh, you know, right there in the middle, 20%. And we make it non-refundable deposit. We'll say that's exactly what it is, or a retainer to retain your date. Do you so do that? Like, do you make it required? Sorry to cut you off. Do you require your deposits right away? So it's like we're gonna we can't reserve your booth until you leave the deposit, or do you allow them, you know, like a grace period of a week to pay it? Or how do you how do you run your business? Yeah. So we would send them a proposal and has list everything that they're gonna get and the price. So we're still in the email e email phase. Then once they agree to everything in the email, we convert that to a agreement or a contract. We send it out, say, this is everything that we talked and emailed about. And uh, you have 48 hours to sign it, or we have to release the date. So in order to confirm the booking, we not only need a signed agreement, so we have a wet signature. So we go into court or we, we you know, get into, uh, arbitration with the credit card company uh, we have assigned and then we also have a deposit and then we take that date off the calendar and then one thing I want to add to that is um, in the event industry is usually the higher the number the more serious because some some vendors take they, they're high quality high end they take fewer clients a year give you that ultimate service they'll they'll require require 50% down 50% and it's non-refundable. So the higher, the higher your uh, deposit is, uh, the more serious you are, the more serious your clients are. Great. I love that you just said that because <clears throat> one thing I wanted to add to is, um, you know, if, if you're just getting started and you want to make, you want more cash flow, you know, it's maybe better in your interest to charge half that way. When you're getting these bookings, you're getting money for work you haven't really yet performed. And I get a lot of people that want to make their uh, ROI, the return on their investment back. So I think, you know, if you're just getting started and you want to see more money up front, maybe raise the deposit. Um, I don't know how you feel about that, but that that's something I've suggested to a few people is, you know, you can actually get that money up front, help you pay for your investment and um, get help you grow. But on the other side, why would it be a bad idea to chart to uh, re request a higher deposit? What do you think? My, I, I personally would think um, you can scare away off. You could scare away a lot of people 
you know, some people may not be ready to pay, you know, let's just say you're charging Rex. Let's just say you're charging 800 for a 360 for a few hours. Some people may not want to dish out 400. They may not have that trust level, but um, I want to hear your take. What do you think is a, uh, why would it be a bad idea to charge a lot for a deposit? Yeah, I think it's a, it's, <laughs> what is going on here? All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, you're good. And, okay. So yeah, one, one reason to charge a higher deposit or one situation is let's say you do a festival and it's seven days and you're going to be printing for seven days straight eight hours a day. You're going to have to be stacked with paper um media ribbon you're also going to have to have backup equipment so yeah that's one reason i i mean if you sign that contract and i and i prepare uh staff operators logistics i have to maybe because this event is so far away that we have to uber in because they you know the parking lots are so far or you have to get a driver to drop you off. These are all expenses that you have that you've already booked. You've already purchased the, the media. You've already booked your staff. You've already booked your rooms. This That's definitely one reason. If they're serious, this is going to happen. So yeah. that it's a great reason to take a big deposit. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong with protecting your company and, and your services. You um, have you ever turned down somebody because they didn't want to pay your deposit? It, it's not that we don't turn it down. It's just our policy. But our like, policy. I mean, like I, I have, for instance, like I get, there's been a few instances where people are like, they have trust issues and, yeah. and <clears throat> I'm always grateful when I'm able to say no to someone because they don't want to pay a deposit. That just means it saves me a headache. I always like, okay, I can relate it to like this. Let's say you're dating someone and they're, <laughs> they're like telling you all this stuff like oh i've been hurt in the past and it's like a red flag you do not want to like take on someone else's baggage it's like just because you've been hurt by someone else just because someone else has screwed you over doesn't mean i'm going to and it's Correct. unfortunate that you've been hurt by someone but it's not fair to me to have to to inherit those issues when it wasn't my fault to begin with i don't know if that's a good analogy but but i mean it's always a it's always important to to stick to your gun, stick to your rules. If you require deposit, someone else doesn't want to pay it, then maybe, maybe they're, maybe you're just not a good fit for them. So I just wanted to mention that. That wasn't really a question. It's just something I, I, I just wanted to say. So if someone doesn't want to pay your deposit, you guys, maybe don't take the job. You know, when I first started off, uh, uh, I literally, man, I didn't take the, I didn't take deposits. I let a few people slide. But um, you know, as you grow, like you mentioned, man, you have to, man. So I'm glad you mentioned. Um, all of uh, all those costs, like the paper, the hotel, and all that. So um, <laughs> I'm rambling, but it goes both ways, Drew. Yeah. Because you know, there's a a lot that goes into um, performing an event. Is you you have to prepare the software, you have to make the settings, the email, the SMS. Uh, you also have to uh, do the artwork, which means you either done it yourself, you spent time doing it, going back and forth, getting approved, or you paid somebody to do it. And then you you load everything up in the car and then you travel just to get there for them to say, oh, you know, so and so who's going to pay. He'll be here any minute. And then they start playing games with you. Look, yeah. it's it's a two way street. Um, if, if they don't want to do the deposit, then I don't think they're serious. But they're, they're serious. We, we we're, we're running a business and, and we have policies for this particular reason. Yeah. But and, Rex, uh, Rex, yeah. I, let's just let's just role play here. I'm the customer. I've hired a, co a photo booth company last week. Um, I paid them the deposit, and then they ghosted me. And then I call the number, and no one's answering. So I'm a little uncomfortable paying Mr. Smiley's photo booth four hundred dollars deposit when this other photo booth company just took my money. Yeah, that's that's a great point, and and we run into that every day. So um, this is going to be a totally another video. But this is where where social proof comes into play. Social proof is kind of like um, somebody who's willing to vouch for you. So if you if you go on to we get this all the time, and here's our can can answer. You know where where you make social media work for you is 
you know what? We have over a hundred five star reviews on Google or on Yelp or on the Knot. And if if we were taking deposits and not showing up, it would be extremely difficult to keep that type of record. It's all about reputation. The reason that we have these reviews, the reason that we have these ratings is because we not only show up, but we pretty pretty much do a damn good job. So it really comes down to social proof. How serious are they? And, the, and every time I tell them that, they're like, well, can I give you half and then half when you arrive? No, it's, it's you give me the deposit and then uh, seven days prior is the balance. And we make that um, very well known in our, in our agreement. That's why we do contracts. So we, we abide by them because the last thing we want to do is chase somebody or a bride who's in, who's on their honeymoon in Cancun for the rest of their balance. You know, they were probably had a great time, had lots of drink, can't even remember what's going on. So, so we really like to take care of it um, before, before the actual event. Very rarely do we take uh, payment the day of because you, you're looking at an operator that has to set up, has to be responsible for equipment, liability, people going in and running, you know, photo bombing. And the last thing we want to do on their way out is, oh, right here, here's a stack of cash put that in your pocket, that adds more liability. We mm -hmm. just really don't want to put them in that position. So yeah. um, deposit beforehand and full balance prior to the event, for sure. I for love sure. it. Dude, that's, a, you're right. That is another video, man, where you're mentioning social proof. Yeah, we'll oh, do yeah. it. I always tell everyone, every single event you do, try to get, you should expect a review. So I'm like, like make it a point, offer something for free, get those reviews because that re those reviews can literally like it's going to help you get more business. But then, like you said, it could really help when there's doubt. So I think that is another, uh, that video? the benefits of social proof. All right. How about this? If, if, you guys, go link in the description, Rex's channel. If we can get on his last video, 10 people writing hustle with drew in his last video, we will, <laughs> we'll do that video. So <laughs> link in the That's description. It. All right. So cool, man. That's a perfect segue also from what we were saying. Um, obviously deposits, you always say non-refundable, but what would be some, um, some good cases where it would be uh, refundable? So I know that's kind of a contradiction, right? We're saying non-refundable, but personally take the whole law aspect away. Like when would you give a refund? Oh man, that is a great question. And, and there are times that we do that and actually, uh, in our, our agreement, we do that. So we allow people to request their uh, deposits back um, 30 days outside of their date. For example, the couple broke up. Hey, we're no longer getting, getting married. I think by contractual law, I think if we went to court, we would win. But in the court of public opinion, if they were to post this to social media, right, this goes back to social proof. Um, it would look really bad if let's say, you know, um, my fiance got in a car accident and passed away. It's like, oh, man, you hear take it back. It's just bad karma. It's just totally bad karma. Now, if they came back and say, you know what, we found somebody totally cheaper, then I'm going to go back and point to the agreement. And if they want to take it to court, I think the judge would love to hear that because they had their opportunity to do their research. We always put everything in detail in our proposals. We don't have any hidden charges. We don't have any hidden fees. Everything is listed out. You know, here's the key liquidated damages. You know, if you if you cancel within 30 days, if you want to cancel because you found a lower price for whatever reason or your your DJ is giving it to you for free or whatever, then you're going to have to give up the deposit. There's, there's just no question. But there, there are those cases where, yeah, somebody passed away, they broke up, um, things of that nature, we would definitely make exceptions for. But, you know, knock on wood, it's, it's a very, very rare situation. We're running a business and, and we, just, we just don't, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, and there was something else I was going to say, I can't remember, but if it pops back up, um, I'll, I'll mention it, but primarily that's pretty much where it's at. So, so <clears throat> where and how, how do you collect your deposits? You know, there's so many ways to do it. You can do it on your, um, 
like HoneyBook, your CRM, I think that's what it's called, CRM. Or do you do it Zelle, Venmo, or do you allow, how do you allow it? And then I can mention after how we, we get ours. Yeah, we'll pretty much accept all forms of payment. Uh, we do like digital quite a bit. If you go back 10 years, I actually have stacks and stacks of checks that people would mail me. But digital yeah, you've payment. Been ar- you've been around so long, man. I love that. <laughs> And I, and I keep them. I don't know why, the, but it just it just shows how the industry has changed in a year or two. Um, our, our number one definitely is Venmo. I like Venmo, so shout out to Venmo. Uh, I love Zelle, so go straight out of your bank where we deal with corporations or even school districts. They still love to write checks, and I have no problem with accepting checks from schools or corporations. They rarely ever bounce. Uh, it's like clockwork. They they pay on the first and the fifteenth, and um, and we have long term standing relationship with those companies. And um, cash is okay. They they want to take it to our bank and deposit it to our account. Uh, what's really you know I hate to say this because they were a fr- they they were um, you know very early to the game was was PayPal, but PayPal has you know, they're very buyer friendly. And they even if you're in the right, and you can show all your documentation, they still insist on on keeping your payment for 30 days or 60 days. So so that's, that's, a. I mean, you know, PayPal is great if you're a buyer. But if you're running a business, and you're still able to provide proof, and it's even difficult to get somebody on the line to talk to, it's it's pretty much at the bottom of my list. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. And then the one more, we don't, we, we don't mind a uh, credit card. So our, our number one credit card processor that we like is Square. Square is awesome to work with. Do you, um, when you use Square and other uh, platforms where they charge you a percentage, do you eat that cost or do you add it on to the total? Yeah, um, primarily if we, you know, we offer all forms of payment. So uh, Venmo or Zelle, uh, ACH, check. None of them have fees, but if you want to do Square, if you want to do credit card, there's a fee, and most of them are, are more than happy to pay it for the convenience. Okay. It's very minimal, anywhere from three, three and a half percent, because you guys don't want to pay fees. We don't want to pay fees. Now, there, there are times when we, we're dealing with very, very large and repeat clients. You're talking larger numbers. Um, we, we actually just absorb it. So it really depends on the client, but 90 90, 95% of the time, um, we do one of the other digital payments, which is uh, Venmo, Venmo um, Zelle, ACH, Check, and then uh, and then Square. You know, that's yeah. the only time we charge, charge fees. Yeah. So, okay. Same here. We do the same thing. <laughs> so um, let's see. I think we've covered everything I think I wanted to speak about and get out of you about deposits. Is there anything that we didn't speak about that you think is important? or a value? Yeah. I, so let's go back to liquidated damages. Mm-hmm. Liquidated damages you want to have in your contract. This is what's going to protect you. So you can say, we're going to take a 50% deposit. And if you let me know, you know, 60 days out that you don't want the service for any reason, we'll give back half. If you're within 30 days, none. It's, it's pretty much a done deal. So, so my advice is to list exactly what it is that, that you want to happen because that's what the judge is. If this ever makes it to court, that's exactly what, what was your intent? What was your intent? Your honor. I had to, you know, arrange for transportation. We had to get artwork. We had to have our staff in place their cost and time that's associated. This and is say no and say no to other potential clients. That's like one of the main turning main- down other clients. Absolutely. So we've already reserved that day for you. Uh, 30 days out, 60 days out. I'm pretty confident that we can book somebody else. But once you get within that three week, 30 day range, it's harder to find another client. Yeah. So so liquidated damages, make sure you list out exactly what it is that you guys are agreeing to make it in simple second grade, third grade language. If they cancel for any reason other than death, 
or accident, then there's absolutely no refund. And court cases are judged by precedence on what happened before. You know, the internet loves to, to chat about what they think is, is right, but something that was totally unprecedented happened within the last two years. No one could have ever predicted that the events industry would shut down for, for two years, you know, and, and, and you're talking, you know, we're only a small portion, 10, maybe 10, 15%, you know, 20% towards entertainment. But the venue who's also providing the space, right, for the ceremony, for the banquet, uh, sometimes even the food, they're taking 50% deposits. And that was kind of crazy because um, they would say your event can still go on, but the state mandate now says that instead of 150 people, you can have 50 people. It's like, well, no, we we still honor your agreement. You still have your day and it's still for your event. But instead of 150, now you can only have 50. Now they're changing the terms of the agreement and they should allow the uh, client to back out because now they change the terms. So you want to be able to, to put in your contract exactly what's going to happen. There are also, you know, force majeure, which is, like acts of God, what if, you know, uh, they, they had a flood or, um, you know, the AC, AC broke because of a thunderstorm or something. Those are things that are acts of God that they cannot control. So those are things that you want to be able to put into your contract, but those things are actually very rare, but it happened to everybody over the last two years. So now you may want a clause that says, you know, if, if, if we need to postpone it, or if there's another pandemic, what what is your, um, how will you handle that? What is your policy re regarding pandemics? And once you spell it out, then you you have a good contract. Hey, Rex, uh, I think we should call it. Um, I don't want to get too off topic. I know it's deposit video, but um, hey, man, appreciate you. And again, everybody, link in the description, first link. Guys, please go click the link, subscribe, Rex makes. Honestly, some of the most technical videos you'll see on YouTube about the photo booth business. If you're interested in iPad booths and you want to print, Rex shows you how to do that wirelessly, not just on one software, but multiple 360 photo booths. Um, Rex, what, what can people expect from your channel coming soon? They can accept nothing but expect nothing but the truth and and you know, in depth, in detail technical analysis and reviews. I also go to a lot of trade shows and I take you along with me and I share some of the newest tech out there. So follow me for more. Cool. Hi, Rex. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. All right. Take care. All right.